Back in January, in the year of our Lord Optimus Prime 2020, Shayna Baszler was supposed to win the Royal Rumble and go on to face Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. It was the next chapter in a story that started at Survivor Series in 2019 and really was the next logical step. But <laughs> lol JK, Charlotte Flair won instead. She faced and won against Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship at WrestleMania, didn't really put anyone over down in the land of black and gold, lost the title without being pinned and went back to Raw, a show she didn't really leave because she was still on Raw and SmackDown while being on NXT at the same time, and before being written off TV due to injury went straight into a feud with new Raw Women's Champion Asuka. Meanwhile, Shayna Baszler was nowhere to be seen as she walked through her sunken dreams. And because I'm in the seat with the clearest view and I'm hooked to the silver screen, I have noticed the trend that Charlotte Flair plus Rumble win plus NXT title win plus always being on TV equals bad. A cursory glance at any YouTube video comment section where Charlotte Flair is the lead topic would lead you to believe that Charlotte Flair is the worst thing to happen in WWE in, well, forever. And really, when you think about it, this isn't anything new. I mean, ever since Charlotte Flair came up to the main roster five or so years ago, she's been labelled by internet critics and armchair bookers as the female Roman Reigns, someone who is shoved down our throats because Vince McMahon really likes them and therefore we have to like them as well. That WrestleMania main event between Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey, the one that perfectly made sense to be a singles match, had Charlotte Flair put in there because... Vince McMahon wanted the WrestleMania main event, the first women's WrestleMania main event, to have Charlotte Flair in it. And therefore, we don't really get a say in the matter. It's just the way that it is. Vince likes them. We have to like them. But what if, and do hear me out comments, I can see you writing there, Big Ruck 42316. I see you writing your comments. Hear me out. What if Charlotte Flair is actually good? Now I could sit here and make arguments all day long, but I think to really prove a point, I'm going to have to get scientific. Right, okay, so to look at this scientifically, I need to... Sorry, one second. In order to look at this scientifically, what I've done is I've gone through the Wrestling Observer newsletter to find star ratings for WrestleMania matches, Charlotte Flair's WrestleMania matches, because typically it's the biggest night of the year for WWE, it's when they put on their best matches, it's when people put in the most effort somewhat. But I can't just look at Charlotte Flair's WrestleMania numbers to prove if she's actually good scientifically, I need to compare the data to something else. They need to compare her to someone else. The person that WWE themselves will tell you is one of the greatest of all time, Trish Stratus. Now I know what you're thinking. I can see you're starting to type already. Why not Beth Phoenix, AJ Lee, Kelly Kelly, I don't know. The simple fact is that WWE have only really just started to care about women's wrestling and when Beth Phoenix and AJ Lee were on top, so was Santino Morella. Beth Phoenix didn't get a big WrestleMania title match. AJ Lee didn't get a big one. She had that match where she faced like 15 people, but really would you say that was a big time WrestleMania match on the level that people like Charlotte Flair, Bailey, and Sasha Banks and Becky have had? No, I, I, I don't think you really can. Trish Stratus on the other hand, had four WrestleMania matches for the title that had storylines going into it and were given some semblance of time. So that's the data we're going to look at. So kicking off with WrestleMania X8 versus Jazz versus Lita, minus one star. It's not looking good. Right. Versus Jazz again, this time versus also Victoria. Two and a quarter stars. So that's a bit better, right? An absolute classic. An absolute WrestleMania classic versus Christy Hemi. Minus two stars. Up next is an actual, an actual WrestleMania classic. And not just because of, not just because of that. Versus Mickey James, two and three quarter stars. Although I think it should have gotten more. So that is Trish Stratus' WrestleMania run. And quick maths, her average is half a star. Let's compare that to Charlotte Flair's WrestleMania run. Here she goes. Woo, up she goes there. 
the women's championship match, bringing back that belt versus Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Four whole stars. Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Nia Jax more losing for Sasha Banks. Three and a quarter stars. Then we get an absolute belter of a match versus Asuka. Four stars with a five star finish. Nope, wait, with a minus five star finish. Am I right? Am I right, YouTube comments? Yeah? Minus, yeah, okay. And then we've got the WrestleMania women's main event versus Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. She had no right being there, but it's still got three stars. Then we have Rhea Ripley, four and a quarter stars. Actually, it should be, I should make reference now that some of these aren't all from Dave Meltzer because all of the, the observers haven't been released. And I think this one's from uh, Larry Sonsko. Rest in peace, Larry Sonsko. Um, but, but you get the idea. This is, you know, an average star rating. Gives her a WrestleMania average rounded to the nearest star rating. That's important. Three and three quarter stars. Not four stars, as I originally wrote. And Adam corrected me. I know what you're thinking. I can see you typing. It's not fair to compare Charlotte Flair to Trish Stratus. After all, Charlotte Flair has never been asked to bark like a dog on TV or wrestle in gravy or present a YouTube video wearing a suit jacket when it's really warm. I am going to have to take this off, actually. Tuck my shirt in. I'm on camera, after all. <clears throat> they care about women's wrestling here. They don't care about it here. I totally get that. So what I did next is I compared Charlotte Flair's WrestleMania record to the other side of her coin. Boom! Becky Lynch left a gap in the middle for a reason. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Becky Lynch, let's have a look at her WrestleMania record. Two of the big matches that she's had were against Charlotte Flair. Both of those Charlotte Flairs, four stars, three stars. We've already kind of covered that. And here's one of my personal favorites. All the SmackDown women had a little match. A match that had more women in it than it got minutes. Glad we got that on the main card rather than the pre-show where it would have got some time. Thanks, Twitter. She was then relegated to the Women's Battle Royal for another star and a half. This year's match against Shani Baz, Shayna Baszler, three stars. When you do the maths and you add it all up correctly, is two and a half stars compared to Charlotte Flair's three and three quarter stars. The science don't lie. But, I know what you're thinking. I can see your comments, I know what you're thinking. It's not fair to compare Charlotte Flair's WrestleMania record with Becky Lynch's. After all, Charlotte Flair's been given all the opportunities to have great matches. Becky didn't get to have a match against Asuka. She didn't get to have a match against Rhea Ripley. She did not get the chances that Charlotte Flair was given. So, to really paint a picture, I went through their entire 2019 pay-per-view records, collated all the star ratings that they got, and came up with an average star rating for their year. And 2019 was a big year for Becky Lynch, right? That was the year of the man. We had a full calendar year of her as the Raw Women's Champion, right? So this should really paint the best picture as to whether or not Charlotte Flair is actually good when compared to someone like Becky Lynch, who we as fans love, I for one bloody love Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch's 2019 record is two and a half stars across 11 matches. And this number, by the way, was massively brought up by that Hell in a Cell feud that she had with Sasha Banks and, ironically, Charlotte Flair. <laughs> like her best matches last year were against Charlotte Flair, right? Charlotte Flair's 2019 record across eight matches was three stars. Half a star better than Becky Lynch. So there you have it. I have scientifically proven that Charlotte Flair is actually good with numbers and stars and sweating. Science. Charlotte Flair is actually good, according to science. And while all that science is very good, perhaps we should look to other voices to answer this question for a more complete argument. Is Charlotte Flair actually good? Charlotte Flair is incredible. In the last several years that she's been in the company, she has done such tremendous work. I think she's beyond actually good. I think she is legitimately one of the greatest performers WWE has right now. I think she's by far one of the greatest female performers WWE's ever have. She's just on a different level compared to everybody else, especially when she is in the ring and she's showing off on the mic. I mean, she's just 
incredible in backstage promos and I I just don't think anybody really matches her level right now. There are a lot of people that WWE pushed to the moon and there are people who like failed to deliver, you know, not everyone delivered 100% satisfaction, but I think Charlotte Flair delivers it every time. She has incredible athleticism. Her in-ring work is phenomenal. She automatically exudes confidence when she's on the mic and there are just so many uh, incredible moments that she has brought, brought to women's history in WWE. The unfortunate issue is very rarely do those situations occur where somebody else capitalizes off of the magnitude of, of stardom in which Charlotte Flair has. But is she good? Yeah, I think she's very good. Huh. I mean, that seems pretty conclusive. If Sean Ross Sapp says it, then it has to be true. So why do people think that Charlotte Flair is bad? In order to answer this question with even more science, I went to the most scientific place possible. Twitter. I put up a poll asking if Charlotte Flair was actually good and she won that quite comfortably with 76.4% of the vote. And I love this reasoning from David McKenzie who says that everyone has their best match against her. That's Bret Hart levels of good. And the replies that said she was good but they didn't like her all had the same argument. It's just her booking that sucks. She's really good but the booking makes you hate. Good wrestler, massively overpushed. Very good performance, but being overpushed costs them. It's not a matter of good, it's a matter of overexposed. She's just overexposed. If they didn't shove her down our throats, she'd get over a lot more, in my opinion. Seriously best in the business, but shoved down our throats like Roman. Yes, as a wrestler. Yes, as a character. No, as an overexposed wrestler and character. Yeah, she's phenomenal. Just booked very badly. The oversaturation argument, I guess, stems from her post-WrestleMania run where she was on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT seemingly every single week and also seemingly not putting anyone over. She beat Liv Morgan, she beat Ruby Riot, she beat Asuka twice. She beat Mia Yim in NXT and even when she lost the title, really, it was Io Shirai pinning Rhea Ripley, so Charlotte's entire NXT run was losing once and even then that was by DQ. And it's funny when you look at those replies because no one's saying that about Banks and Bailey, and they've also been on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT seemingly every week. And part of me thinks that that comes down to the fact that Banks missed a good chunk of 2019 and is now finally getting the heel push that we've been asking for since she came up from NXT. Same for Bailey, whose main roster run has been, well, a wet fart of nothing. Their tag act is really, really good, and we, as fans, kind of want to see them win all the gold and be on every show. While there are other arguments that Charlotte Flair only got her place in the company because of her family name, she's had too many title runs, etc, etc, they all feel a bit irrelevant. Flair is pushed to the top because they made her a star and she's fan fantastic in the ring. She had the best matches at both WrestleMania and NXT TakeOver in your house this year and that's not by accident. But the constant pushing of Flair becomes problematic for some people when you look at the depth of the WWE women's roster and you realise why are we only pushing Charlotte Flair when you have Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Viper, Kaylee Ray, Ginny, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Mia Yim, Mercedes Martinez, Tegan Knox, Charlie Blackheart, or Rhea Ripley and <clears throat> and that's just a casual glance at the NXT roster. WWE has the best women's roster in the world that's not stardom. So like that one Twitter comment said, it's not a matter of whether she's good or not, it's whether she's overexposed or not. She's had five WrestleMania programs when no one else was getting a spotlight. She was put into that WrestleMania main event even though she had literally no business being there. She was picked as Becky Lynch's avatar for Survivor Series 2018, even though we all knew it should have been Asuka. She beat Rhea Ripley and then didn't put anyone over in NXT. She didn't even put anyone over when she lost the belt. So perhaps this time off for Charlotte Flair is actually going to do her the world of good in the eyes of WWE fans. With her, Becky and Ronda now all out of the top picture, WWE has a chance to really build their women's division around Sasha Banks, Asuka, Bailey, Naomi, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler, even Nia Jax, and bloody Bianca Belair, you know, all the women that we've been crying to be on top of the division since 2018. 
And Flair coming back feeling fresh and feuding with these new fresh faces will in turn make her feel fresh and new too. And then she can win all of those feuds, win the Royal Rumble, main event WrestleMania again, and we can all go back to hating her despite her having the best matches. My favorite is Charlotte Flair match. That is difficult. Definitely not that Lacey Evans match. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to say, um, oh, the match with Asuka at WrestleMania. Charlotte versus Becky, uh, last woman standing match. When she won the Divas, Divas title against Nikki Bella, that's a really good match too. I don't think anyone really pays attention to that match. There's a ton of them that I really like. I, I think that she, she consistently delivers. Rarely do I see her have a bad match.